first question was from an anonymous patron. How confident are you that Lightning Networks will bring the desired scalability and security to the network? Thanks. Um, I'm, I'm very confident. Um, and I'm not only confident that we will be able to achieve tremendous scaling with Lightning Networks, but I think we will also be able to achieve that in a scale-free manner. And we will also get uh, much better security and privacy. So what do I mean by that? Um, I think we're going to see Lightning Networks operating um, either before the end of the year or very shortly after the beginning of 2018. I've already been running uh, beta test software from uh, both the uh, LND variety, which is the Lightning Network daemon um, made by the Lightning Network company. Uh, but there are a number of implementations. Um, most people misunderstand and they think Lightning Network is a company. There is a company called Lightning Network. Uh, you know, just like there's a company called Blockchain, but that doesn't mean that's the company that makes the blockchain. It doesn't mean that's the company that makes the Lightning Network. Um, there's one implementation by the Lightning Network company. Uh, you know, that's uh, the company that started all of this, but the specification for the protocol is open source. And not only is it open source, but uh, about a year ago, the, the various different groups, uh, both companies and open source projects that were involved in Lightning, got together, and they built a set of common interoperability standards. And these standards um, are called BOLT. Um, Bolt is the basics of lightning technology. There's all of these puns you can make about weathers and clouds and lightning strikes and thunder and all of that. So people are really milking that metaphor. So Bolt is a set of standards, um, and these define how the various implementations uh, would interoperate. Um, I believe there's 12 Bolt documents. You can find them on GitHub. They're part of a, an RFC. And uh, they are basically the, the, the interoperability standard. And the six different teams that are working on implementations of Lightning Network, which include the Lightning Network company, they include uh, Blockstream, which is making C Lightning, they include Async, which is making Eclair, which is a uh, uh, French for Lightning, it's a French company. Um, those three are most prominently involved in the interoperability testing, but there's um, three more companies that are working on implementations in a variety of different languages. Um, and these are completely independent teams working on uh, all open source projects, all of them are open source, and all uh, working on the same interoperable standard. For the last month or so, I've watched as um, the three companies that have the most advanced implementations so far, which are very close uh, to production capability, have been doing interoperability testing. And last week, uh, all three companies were able to pass all 75 tests of compatibility, meaning that using any one of the three different implementations would allow um, allow you to work uh, as part of the Lightning Network. And what that means is it doesn't matter what client you have, just like it doesn't matter what Bitcoin wallet you have to use Bitcoin, it doesn't matter what client you have to use Lightning Network, as long as it's interoperable. And it will be able to open payment channels to any, other, any of the other clients. It will be able to route payments across multiple channels. Um, and do so with, with very high degree of privacy. They are all implementing the onion routing protocol. And what onion routing means is that each node only sees the immediate hop before it and the immediate hop after it. Uh, the reason it's called onion routing is because the routing information is, is wrapped in layers. So you receive an encrypted package from the node immediately previously to you, and you don't know where this is going, and, and the node before you doesn't know where it's going. Um, and you unwrap it, and you find routing information inside, which tells you where to go for the next hop, but it, you don't know anything more than that. And then you send it to that next hop, 
they open it and they find routing information to send it to the next hop. Every uh, node in this route doesn't know how many hops have passed and it doesn't know how many hops are yet to come. Uh, in fact, the routes are always the same length. And so you can't tell if you're the first or the 20th in a 20 hop network. So paths can be up to 20 hops long and they always look 20 hops. So um, if uh, the, the route information for less than 20 hops is padded with, with garbage that's encrypted that you don't know is garbage, but you just pass it on thinking it's routing information for the next node until one of the nodes opens up the package and finds out it's actually the destination uh, of that route. And, and the, the other 19 directions that follow are actually garbage and it discards them, but only that nodes knows that it's the last one in the hop. So only the sender and the recipient know how long the route is. Only the sender and the recipient know which position they are in the route. Um, and everybody in between is just passing this encrypted bundle of information. Um, this is a very high security protocol. It's the same protocol that's used in Tor. If you've heard of Tor, Tor stand, stands for uh, the onion router, and it does this form of routing called onion routing. Uh, so the initial implementation of Lightning Network will use onion routing uh, for very high degree of privacy. Um, one of the uh, uh, questions that's, that remains is, will Lightning itself become centralized? Are there particular incentives to run a hub, to run a node that's connected with lots of payment channels to lots of other nodes, and that gets used for a lot of the routes. Um, and is it possible that people with a lot of money, um, for example, exchanges, would set up lightning nodes that are essentially the main participants in the lightning network, and you end up with this hub and spoke system where there's a lot of concentration and centralization. Uh, I think it's unlikely that will happen, and there's a number of reasons. First of all, if you're running a Lightning node and you set up payment channels, in order for you to effectively route and make payments, you have to have the keys uh, online on that system. The more funds you put into those payment channels, the higher the risk that your node uh, is you know, a target for hacking. And so uh, there's a disadvantage to having a, a node with a lot of funds. Um, and if you open lots of, lots of uh, payment channels to do lots of routing, you have to put quite a lot of funds in those payment channels. Um, if instead each node opens you know, four or five different routes, um, and they all end up creating this fairly tight mesh, uh, where it's very peer-to-peer -peer and there's not much centralization, that's actually the best model for this, and that's what's called a scale-free network, which means that it looks the same at any scale. Um, and as a result, a network like that doesn't have any um, doesn't have the tendency to centralization. There are good reasons why centralization uh, is discouraged. Now, um, one of the really interesting things is that the Lightning Network, as is already with the current Bolt specification is implementing various techniques to rebalance channels, which means that if you continuously send on one channel, all of the funds will end up on the far end of the channel, and then in order to rebalance it, you need to route payments in the opposite direction. Um, and they do that automatically. Um, I've looked at the Lightning Network de daemon, and one of the things that I also like quite a lot is that they have a mechanism for automatically managing channels. So you don't have to think about your node, which could be running on your, on your smartphone. You can run a full Lightning Network node on your smartphone or your laptop or your desktop computer. You don't need to worry about what channels it needs to open. It basically manages channels on its own. It opens channels to um, parties that it thinks will give you good connectivity to the network. The same way that your Bitcoin node uh, makes connections to eight other nodes in order to maintain good connectivity. So the advantage of that is that um, it's designed to automatically manage channels so as to create this kind of not centralized environment.